Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to evaluate sine of pi over 60 radians. If you know that pi radians is 180 degrees, then you'll quickly convert this to degrees and it'll be sine of 3 degrees. So how do we evaluate that? Let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm going to be working with degrees for a while, maybe all the way through the end. But since I'm going to be writing it quite a few times, I don't want to write the degree symbol. So when I don't write the degree symbol with numbers like this without the pi, it means they are all in degrees. I just wanted to explain that as a disclaimer. Now, how do we find three degrees? So we're going to use two semi-special angles and their difference to find three degrees. And that will be 18 and 15 degrees, right? Their difference is going to give us three degrees. But the million dollar question is, can we find sine of 18 degrees or cosine of 18 degrees or something like that, right? Or maybe we could go off of tangents, go off on a tangent, right? So how do we do that? Well, tangent might be a little easier to do because there's only one function involved in tangent where sine and cosine are kind of more mixed, okay? Anyways, let's go ahead and draw a very special triangle. And this is probably called a golden triangle, right? For a good reason. So here's our triangle. Our triangle is going to be isosceles and the base angles are going to be 72 de degrees. So this is going to be 72 degrees and this is going to be 72 degrees. Let me go ahead and use a different color here. 72 degrees and then 72 degrees. Of course that involves the vertex angle, the top one, to be 36 degrees. Great. But this is not so great. We're going to make it a little greater by splitting it into uh, another uh, two triangles, one of which is actually both of them, And by the way. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a line or segment like this such that this triangle is also isosceles. You know what that means? It means the base angles are also 72 degrees, but also that this angle is 36 degrees. And of course, this angle will also be 36 degrees because 36 plus 36 is 72. Does that make sense? Awesome. See if I can erase it without erasing lots of things. So now we have two 36 degrees, which make up a 72. But guess what? We said that this is isosceles, right? Let me go ahead and name these triangles so we can refer to them by names. Like, for example, we said that, okay, DBC is isosceles. Guess what? ADB is also isosceles because of the 36 and 36. So these two are also identical, which means this is here at 180 degrees, but that doesn't matter that much. But one of the things that's going to help us is to name these side lengths. For example, let's call AB1, and we could always do that, and let's call ADX. Now notice that if this is X, this is also X and this is also X. Awesome. And since ABC is isosceles, the whole thing is 1. AD is X, DC must be 1 minus X. Awesome. We formed our triangle. Now we're going to use similarity. Okay, great. Now, of course, we only have 72 and 36, but we can go from 72 to 18 easily. You'll see in a little bit how. Now, how do we use similarity? First of all, consider the largest triangle ABC and go off of the side opposite 36 degrees that will be X and then go to a small triangle that is similar to this by the way it'll be this one okay and notice that the same side that opposite 36 degrees is going to be 1 minus X so we're going to look at the ratio of those two sides which is always the same for similar triangles in this case we're going to be comparing next the side opposite 72 which is 1, to the side opposite 72, which is x. You see, we compare the x to whatever, or we compare this 36 to whatever, and then 72 to whatever. Okay? Makes sense? Now, this gives us a quadratic equation after cross-multiplication. We get x squared equals 1 minus x, or x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0. Awesome. Let's go ahead and solve this quadratic equation quickly with the quadratic formula, because it's not factorable easily. And then this is going to be negative 1 plus minus the square root of b squared, 1 plus 4, which is 5. And then we get the 
golden ratio, don't we? Well, there are two solutions, negative 1 plus root 5 over 2 and negative 1 minus root 5 over 2. Wait a minute, negative 1 minus root 5 over 2 is less than 0, so we have to get rid of that because the length cannot be negative. So we have to go off of this length, and that means x will be root 5 minus 1 over 2. I just like to write it that way because it looks more positive. All right, so that's the value of x. Great, but what does that give us? Now here's the thing. You can actually use that in a different setting. Let's, let me show you how. You can definitely use the law of signs here, but I think this method will be a little easier. So we're gonna draw our triangle again, this time with a known side length. So the base angles are 72 degrees again. Again, I'm not writing the degree symbol, so but you should understand it's in degrees. One, one, and this should be root five minus one over two, right? But why is that so? Because that's x, right? <laughs> Great, now here's what we're gonna do. We're going to split it up into two triangles because notice that the top angle is 36, but I'm not going to write it because I'm about to split it in half. And now this is going to be 18 degrees and 18 degrees, which is awesome because I needed sine and cosine of 18 degrees, right? Great. How do we find it though? Well, we cut it in half because this is isosceles, then it has to be split in half. So this length right here is going to be root 5 minus 1 over 4, which should be familiar to you because that's the value of sine of 18 degrees. Get that? Okay, you should maybe memorize it. But sine 18 is root 5 minus 1 over 4. What about cosine 18? Let's call this h because that's the height and use Pythagorean theorem. h squared plus root 5 minus 1 over 4 squared equals 1 squared. And let's go ahead and square this a little bit. 6 minus 2 root 5 over 16. Don't simplify it because I'll show you why in a little bit. Subtract from 1. Do the math. And then simplify this. This is going to give you after simplifying 16 minus 6 which is 10. Plus because double negation. 2, 10 root, 2 root 5 divided by 16. The reason why I didn't want you to simplify is because I'm going to take the square root. And when I do, I want the denominator to be rational. Make sense? And that's just going to be 4. If you simplified it, it, you would get an 8 and you would have to rationalize again. So why do double work? So that's h, but h is at the same time cosine of 18 degrees because hypotenuse is 1. That's what's beautiful about this problem because you set it to 1, things will be easier. So cosine 18 will be then, they're not like that similar, right? Such a weird combo, but that's what it is, sine and cosine 18. So what am I going to do next? Remember I told you. We're going to use 18 and 15 and they are semi-special. Why? Because I don't know the degree or the value of sine 15 or cosine 15 right away. But I can find it with a little manipulation. And the special angles are 30, 45, and 60. You know that, right? So let's go ahead and start with that 30, 60 triangle. And this is going to be my 30 degrees. That's going to be my uh, 60 degrees. And that's going to be my 90 degrees, of course. So I want to call this triangle ABC again. Forget about the previous letters. I want to extend AC as long as BC so that when I connect B to, let's call this point D, when I connect B to D, hopefully I can make it straight, yes, and that'll be an isosceles triangle like this. Notice that if uh, these two are identical or congruent, then BCD is isosceles, and from exterior angle theorem, this is 30 degrees, therefore this is 15 and 15. This is a trick that I used quite a few times in some of the problems for which we use geometry or trigonometry, whatever. So here is how it goes. This is 1, this is root 3, remember the special triangle, this is a 2, this is also a 2, and from here I can find tangent 15, but I need sine and cosine 15. Well, wait a minute, if you call this A and use the Pythagorean theorem, 1 squared plus root 3 plus 2 squared is equal to a squared, you find a to be something that looks like this. Make sense? So from here we can basically find sine 15 and cosine 15. To make it a little easier for you, let me just give those values to you, okay? Sine 15 is root 6 minus root 2 over 4, cosine 15 is root 6 plus root 2 over 4. By the way, you don't have to use this method to find sine 15 and cosine 15. For example, you could do sine of 45 minus 30 in degrees, of course, and then use the formulas. It would give you the same answer and probably a little faster. All right, anyways, those are the values. I got the 15, I got the 18. Let's put it together. Now, 
I'm looking for sine of 3 degrees, right? So this is equal to sine of 18 minus 15. And the formula says sine A cosine B minus sine B cosine A or cosine A sine B. doesn't matter. However you want to do it. And now we got the values. Let's go ahead and plug them in. Root 5 minus 1 over 4 times root 6 plus root 2 over 4. And a minus sine 15, which is root 6 minus root 2 over 4 times square root of 10 plus 2 root 5. Remember, that was a weird, weird value over 4. And of course, when you do the math, you're going to get uh, at 16 at the bottom, which is a common denominator. Let's go ahead and quickly look at, look at the result from, I think, Wikipedia, maybe, something like that. Anyway, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.